After a dry pre-final, we're about to get our first wet final of the year in the junior category of the Rotax Max Euro Challenge. But I don't think our pole sitter will mind. Strawberry Racing's Harry Webb goes well in these conditions. There's Team TKP driver Yano Esmeyer, second on the grid, and now second in the championship to Harry Webb by just a single point. Next, it's Ryan Anderton for Coles Racing, a fairly lonely third in the pre-final, but that was his best result of the year so far. He's currently sixth in the championship. Fourth on the grid is Lars Lamborell, Yano Esmar's team TKP teammate. Excluded from round one, he can't now win the title, so he's free to go for the win. That's Thomas Prining, who lines up fifth for Formula K. He missed round one and had a moderate result in round two, but he's looking strong here in Sweden. Completing the third row is Jan Jonk, driving for RS Competition. A pretty solid season so far, he's seventh in the championship. The carts leave the dummy grid, but there's a problem for Ryan Anderton, who can't get going. Frustration for him, but there's going to be a second formation lap here. The clerk of the course decided they weren't lined up properly, and that could give Anderton a bit more time to solve the problem. Here they come then, it should be a goer this time, no overtaking till across the start line, and now they're now the throttle, standard towards the first corner. The right-hand side of the grid gets away well, so that's Webb, Prining, Max Aitken and Josh White, and there's a spinner into turn one, 97, Benjamin Torquist Pearson. Then Aitken takes a trip across the grass in the 49 cart. So it's Harry Webb that leads, number 18, Thomas Prining has moved up to second, Josh White is third, S. Meyer has dropped from second to fourth, and then it's Max Aitken in fifth, after he went onto the grass at turn one. Prining is now coming under pressure from 61 Josh White and the RL Racing Department driver charges past. That's ninth to second in less than half a lap for the British driver. But now he runs wide at the hairpin and gives the place back to Brining. S. Meyer is trying to get past as well. That's not happening. Elbows out for White. And now he lunges down the inside of Prining. Back up to second. S. Meyer follows him through. The Dutchman goes third and Prining drops back to fourth place. You can barely take your eyes off this one. Tremendous first lap. And now look at this, Prining is driving on the grass, the wet grass, to try and find a way past this Meyer. Max Aitken now cruises up to the back of them under braking and has a nibble at the inside through the apex. And through he comes to pick up fourth place. Prining's back where he started and now he's got 87. Tom Meyer from the Netherlands on his case. The Austrian might lose another place here. He does. Back to sixth place now for the driver who leads the Central and Eastern European Rotax Championship. He tries to get it back, but to no avail. Having enjoyed dry conditions all day, these drivers have had no time to get used to a wet track, so there are bound to be mistakes. Meanwhile, Prining is still desperately trying to get fifth place back from Meyer. Just behind in seventh place is Khan Onda, driving the Alonso cart with the turquoise bodywork, and that's impressive. He started back in 21st position. Now we've got a spinner, that's number 40, Yan Yong from sixth on the grid. What happened to the Danish driver? Here's a replay. Oh, and he got an almighty whack from behind. Number 29, Theodore Moran, the culprit. Here's 87, Tom Meyer. He's catching Max Aitken for fourth place, revelling in these wet conditions. And it is now very wet. To give you an idea, they're about 12 seconds a lap slower than they were on slicks. Max Aitken is fourth in the championship, but had a terrible build-up to the race and only just scraped into the pre-final. But he's come good at the right time. Aitken charged from 30th to 7th in the pre-final and he's picked up two more places at the start of this race. He's been caught though by Meyer and the Formula K driver comes through. Aitken didn't fight too hard and instead concentrates on getting his exit right. Clever stuff, it almost pays off as he draws back alongside the Dutchman. But that only serves to spur Meyer on further and now he attacks Lars Lamborel for fourth place. They rub bodywork, two wheels on the grass for Lamborel and he concedes another place to Aitken. He didn't like that one bit and Lamborel gets his nose back in front of Aitken. He then tries to fight back, they run shoulder to shoulder through the next corner. Right-hander coming up, Lamborel has the inside line and he gets the position back. So here's the order, Harry Webb leads, Josh White is second, Yano Esmar is third, Tom Meyer is fourth and you're looking at Lars Lamborel in fifth and Max Aitken in sixth. And having just set a very quick lap, this pair now being caught by number 53, Guan Yu Zhu from Great Britain. In fact, the top six exclusively made up of British and Dutch drivers at the moment, which probably says a lot about the climates of those two countries. Here's Yu Zhu with them already and attacking at the very first opportunity. A tight line through the turn and he looks like he's got that cart planted underneath him. That's giving him confidence and to prove the point, he now breaks super late for the hairpin and charges up the inside of Lamborel. And once again, Max Aitken reads the situation beautifully, but he can't quite find a way through. And just look how quickly Guan Yu Zhu is pulling away from them. He set the fastest lap of the race in the pre-final, nearly half a second quicker than this man, teammate Harry Webb, who was the eventual winner of that race. 
There's Josh White in second, and here's the battle for third with number 87, Tom Meyer, catching nine, Yano S. Meyer, and both of them have been caught by the flying Guan Yu Zhu. So if I was Tom Meyer, I'd be getting on with this because if he gets stuck behind S. Meyer for too long, he's going to have Yu Zhu to try and keep at bay. Meyer has a go, S. Meyer struggles him off, but S. Meyer is not particularly quick at the moment. It looks like he's going to lose more points to championship leader Harry Webb. There's only one more round of the Rotax Max Euro Challenge to come, so he needs to stay in touch at the top of the leaderboard. But can he realistically fend off Tom Meyer when Meyer is more than a second a lap quicker? Answer, no. Meyer takes third place away from him, and this is turning into a great drive by Meyer. He's positive rather than aggressive with his overtaking. He's smooth, and he's on course for a podium. Further back, what's this? Contact as Benjamin Pearson sideswipes number 30, Jol Deptuch. The Polish driver is going to lose a couple more places. And that was the Swedish driver being single-minded as he tried to recover from his lap one spin. Here's somebody else recovering from a spin. Number 40 in the middle of this trio. It's Jan Jonk who was barged off the track early on in the race. He's back up to the middle of the pack though. Ahead of him is Lennart van Bogart. And that's another excursion from Jonk. This time, I think it was his own doing. Here's the leader, Harry Webb, almost eight seconds clear of Josh White after 10 laps of racing. White's also doing a great job, especially given that he came from 19th on the grid at the start of the pre-final. Third is Tom Meyer, and he's pulled a big gap back to fourth place, which now belongs to Guan Yu Zhu. So Yano S. Meyer is down to fifth. We also lost Lars Lamorel from the top six a couple of laps ago. 71, Florian Wiesinger wheel-to-wheel -wheel here with Benjamin Pearson. Wiesinger briefly nosed ahead, but Pearson in the mood for a fight and gets back in front. Side by side again, and Pearson is forced off the road as Wiesinger comes by. From the angle, I couldn't quite tell if that was contact or just Pearson running wide. Either way, the change has occurred. Meanwhile, back to the ongoing adventures of Yan Yonk, and this time it's a step in the right direction as he overtakes 91, Nicholas Oskarsson. Over the line, this is the battle for 12th place with Enrique Baptista just ahead of young Lando Norris who has carried tremendous speed onto the straight and gets by into turn one but then runs wide and puts the Portuguese driver back in front. Norris finished 10th in the pre-final, Baptista was 13th. This time it's Baptista running a little wide. Norris ran over the inside kerb in an effort to come past and it seems to have worked. It's a bit rough and ready but he's able to stay on line and Norris secures eventually 12th place. Ahead of them, here's Fazio Franzen in 10th and number 25, Jack Bartholomew in 11th. We're on the last lap. It's been a very good drive, this, by Bartholomew because he's had to come from 26th on the grid. And he's not quite done yet. The British driver goes for a move, brave stuff, and Bartholomew is rewarded with a place inside the top 10. The chequered flag is being readied and it goes now to Harry Webb, a race winner for the second time this season with Josh White as the runner-up. So many congratulations to Harry Webb, who takes his place on the top step of the podium. Left of picture is Josh White, and to the right is Tom Meyer with his first podium of the season. Harry Webb will now take a nine-point lead into the final round of the championship, but first he has to try and keep his composure on the podium.